here is a problem on kinematics and the topic is motion along straight line and as you have done several problems you have noticed that generally uh, falling objects under gravity they are categorized in motion along straight line and of course the acceleration there is constant uh, if a stone is dropped important word so i'm going to mark it here when stone is dropped what that means is u is zero from the top of a tower with height h find an expression for the distance traveled by it in any nth second before it hits the ground then some of the words that you may want to underline because uh, you want to interpret them correctly and the condition is before it hits the ground in any nth second if it is known that the stone falls through 35 meters in the last second just before reaching the ground what is the height of the tower so here we will try to analyze this problem and understand it what the problem says is a stone is dropped from top of the tower and we are asked to find what will be the expression for distance traveled in nth second so before going into the algebra we say suppose it was told and the problem had enough data what is the distance traveled in say fifth second then distance traveled in fifth second is what is distance traveled in first four seconds find that out find distance traveled in five seconds and so let's see that if it was distance traveled in five seconds is s5 distance traveled in four seconds is s4 and these are subscripts so certainly s5 which is larger and i'm going to write that here like this so that when i subtract i'm getting a positive quantity for distance so this is what is asked but we already put 4 uh, 5 and 4 and so it becomes easy to understand doesn't matter we'll put n for the time so for the fifth we had to consider 4 so if it is n we will have to consider n minus 1 and this relationship will be always true what we don't know is whether n can exceed the time t when the stone hits the ground certainly not otherwise how can we find the stone is already on the ground so this n has to be less than t and simply to make it mathematically correct this every time on the right hand side of this sign will be greater than 0 so here the falling of stone begins here it ends if you are very strict you could put this zero less than or equal to because it's possible that you are simply trying to find out in first second and same logic here you will have to put n less than or equal to t this won't matter much the equality signs what matters is that n is somewhere in between in the interval which is less than uh, t that is t is the time when it strikes the ground so let us find what is the distance traveled in n seconds n is larger so that distance is going to be larger so i am writing s n is equal to u t plus 1/2 g t square because g is the gravitational acceleration so and it is positive note that g is greater than 0 uh these signs are required because it's falling in the direction of motion and so we take g as positive u is given as 0 so this quantity becomes 0 now our t is n so i'm going to substitute this as n and so i write 
g n square and so this is my sn i call this as 1 similarly if i write expression for n minus 1 that is time it's going to be exactly same u is 0 1 half g n minus 1 square so i'm not going to do that whole bit and write s n minus 1 subscript is 1 half g n minus 1 square this is my second remember s5 is greater than s4 so s n minus 1 is smaller so s n is greater so required distance is equal to s n minus s n minus 1 this is nothing but 1 minus 2 and uh, as you can see here this is common this is common so I unnecessarily do in two steps I am putting that here and writing n square minus n minus 1 square this is equal to 1 half g n square minus n I am expanding this minus 2 n plus 1 and this closes so this is 1 half g now this n square cancels with this this minus minus n becomes plus so you have 2 n and minus will make that one negative one and see this is how we simplify it now I'm going to go to the next page here I have copied the expression that we so far uh, derived so I'm going to continue and write and this was s n minus s n minus 1 the required distance and so that is equal to if I send that half or the 2 inside it is going to be g times n minus 1 half so I am going to simply write this and put it in a box because that is one of our answers and I will call this as answer 1 the question to other half is and the problem said if it falls through height of 35 meters in the last second uh, no just before it hits the ground in the last second and that is correct that means when the stone hits the ground say in n second so on this 35 actually represents s n minus s n minus s n minus 1 this is the last one second before hitting the ground so you already have derived this expression so 35 meters and I'm going to take these units off here just to be consistent so g is 10 n is not known so this is one half by keeping here n we are trying to find what is the time for stone to reach the ground and that is n so we simplify this this 10 can be transposed so this implies that 3.5 is n minus one half this implies that n is equal to bring that half this side and so it becomes 4 so 4 seconds is the time in which the stone reaches the ground but they asked how much is the height of the tower now it's easy in four seconds it travels all the height which is sn or you could write simply s doesn't matter and use the same ut again u is 0 plus 1 half g t square and that g is 10 and t is already found which is 4 4 square is 16 so this is equal to 8 times so 80 meters so this is our second answer so as you probably have seen that it takes 4 seconds to travel 80 meters so 
in the last second it has traveled 35 meter that means in 3 seconds 80 minus 35 is 45 meters is the distance traveled in first 3 seconds and in last 1 second the distance traveled is uh, which is given as 35 Th thus total is 80 so in 1 second this distance can be traveled because by that time the velocity has really increased significantly because it's an accelerated motion and that's the end of the solution